Shalom to the Lord's elect of the nation of Israel. Welcome to another edition of Great Millstone Mailbag Extra. Coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai Bar Shem All praises and glory is due with another edition of the Daily Edification. Now in this video, I was thinking about the scripture here. The book of Genesis, the 27th chapter beginning at the 38th verse which is a scripture that speaks about the blessing of Esau which is the sword now pursuant to the holy scriptures we know that Esau is ruling right now they're in their kingdom they're in their rulership and the blessing that they got was the sword and that came from our forefather, forefather Isaac. Now Isaac, or Yahweh Shai in his past life was Isaac. Let's go to the book of Matthew. I think it's the first chapter. Now those of us that are in the know, we understand about reincarnation. We understand about generations. We understand that we keep coming back on the planet Earth. That's why history repeats itself, because the same spirits keep coming back. We understand that we're spirits and bodies, and that every three or four generations we come back to the Earth. So, it was no different with Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, Yahweh Shai was on the Earth many times. Before he came as Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. I mean, he came as Adam. The scriptures that totally prove that. You know, one scripture that comes to mind is the book of, uh, let's hold that. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter. And the 14th verse. Which says this. Nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come now who is this him that was to come our Lord okay which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ which his true name is Yahweh Shai so he was back there as Adam and then he also came as Solomon, King Solomon. But before he came as King Solomon, he came as Isaac. Okay, and it was Isaac that gave Esau his blessing. So the point I'm making in this video, this is proof that the only one that can take down the so-called white man in his power structure was the one that gave, gave him his power to begin with. That being Isaac, which really is Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai, as Isaac gave him his power, Yahweh Shai as Yahweh Shai is coming to take his power, take away his power. And that's the nature of this video. So now let's go back to Matthew, the first chapter. And of course, I'm not going to prove that Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, I'm not going to prove it to everybody that he was Isaac. This is for the ones that are in the know. This is for the elect. As it is written, Romans 11 and 7. The elect have obtained it, meaning the understanding of the scriptures, the understanding of the mysteries, which reincarnation is definitely a mystery. It's really not a mystery to us that are in the know that the Holy Spirit have revealed to. But to the majority of our people, it's a mystery. So, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 7, the, the elect have obtained it, meaning the understanding of the mystery, and the rest were blinded. Okay, that's Romans the 11th chapter, the 7th verse. Also, when you go in the book of Revelation, the 10th chapter, speaking on the mystery, which like I said, one of the mysteries is a uh, reincarnation. You know, how, how generations work. You know. When you go in the, I'm sorry, the 10th chapter. In the seventh verse, it says this, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, the seventh angel represents the nuclear missiles. Seven means completion. The word angel means messenger. 
So the message this angel will bring is destruction, as in the nuclear missiles, also the chariots of the Lord, which are coming to bring destruction as, as well. So that is what is meant by the metaphor of the seventh angel. So in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of the heavenly father should be finished as he have declared to his servants, the prophets. There you go. So part of that mystery is the way generations work, the way reincarnation works. It's a mystery. It's a mystery to the majority of the Lord's people and also uh, outside of the Lord's people, which are the other nations. But he have declared that mystery to his servants, the prophets, and the prophets are back. That's a case of reincarnation right there. The same prophets that were back there prophesying, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all these men are back in their gen respective generations. Hence the, t the, the word reincarnation, which indeed, like I said, is a mystery, but that mystery has been declared to his servants, the prophets. We understand, we understand about that mystery. Let's go to book of Amos. Three and seven. And that's who we are. We're, we're not black identity extremists. <laughs> we're, the, we're the prophets of the Lord, man. We're the Hebrew Israelite prophets of old coming back once again to prophesy the downfall of this society, the downfall of this kingdom, and the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay, the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and the coming of his kingdom, which he was promised by his father, Yahweh. It is right here, Amos 3 and 7, it says, Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, that's that same secret or mystery, if you will, that Revelation 10 and 7 spoke about. Now, when you go back to Revelation 10 and 7, it speaks about what? The seventh trumpet or the seventh angel? Well, let's see what Job said. Here's another clue that that seventh angel is really destruction in the form of the nuclear missiles as well as the chariots. And this is what we're waiting for. We're in between the sixth and seventh uh, trumpet or voice of the angel. Right here in the book of Job, the fifth chapter, the 19th verse, it says this. He shall deliver thee, that's his elect. Because who's going to be delivered? The elect of the nation of Israel. Matthew 24 and uh, beginning at the 31st verse. He shall deliver thee, this he is Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh Shai, by the way, means he is the deliverer, he is the savior. That's in ancient Hebrew. Uh, that's a case of Norman Omen, by the way. Norman Omen is Latin for name, prediction, or some say Omen Norman, okay? Which, it means the same thing. Your name predicts what you shall do or what you shall be. Anyway, he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee, because the seventh trouble is what? The seventh trouble is destruction by the nuclear missiles and by the chariots. Total destruction, which is what the Lord is coming to bring. And by the way, it's in that total destruction that Esau's power will be revoked. The same power that as Isaac, uh, Yahweh Shai gave Esau as Isaac. Okay? So let's let's go back and uh, prove that. Matthew 1 and 1, the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, the generation of Yahweh Shai. How many times was he generated? Anything generated, brothers, keeps coming back over and over and over again. That's why we have something called generations. People do not know the meaning of words. You know, people scoff at the idea of reincarnation because they're ignorant to the meaning of the word. Reincarnation simply means back in the flesh. When something comes back in the flesh, that means it's regenerated or generated. Hence the, ter the term generation. Generation. Okay, so the book of the generation of our Lord Yahweh Shai, the son of David, which was who? Solomon. Okay, David, yes, he had many sons, but this son in particular was Solomon. We know that Yahweh Shai was Solomon. Even Yahweh Shai knew he was Solomon. Okay, King Solomon. All right, this, the son of David, King Solomon, the son of Abraham. Now, Abraham had many sons, that's true. Okay, but the son that he had that fits the scripture here was Isaac. And that is why, that is why when you read about Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, that was an omen of things to come concerning Yahweh Shai. 
Now, he wasn't sacrificed back there as Isaac, but he indeed was sacrificed as Yahweh Shai. He was that lamb. Okay, so when you read about the story of um, Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac, that was an omen of things to come. Or was about to sacrifice, let me say it correctly, was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. That was an omen of things to come. Isaac being Yahweh Shai. Okay, so that's another clue. All right, so there you go. Matthew 1 and 1. Uh, Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham, meaning Isaac. So it was Isaac that uh, it was Isaac that gave Esau his blessing. Let's get to it. Genesis 27 and 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. And that would be his brother Jacob. Okay, because we or our forefather Jacob supplanted Esau out of his blessing, the real blessing that he wanted. He was supplanted out of it. Again, Norman Omen. Jacob means supplanter, which means to get over. Okay. Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? So here is when Esau got his blessing from Isaac. Remember, Yahweh Shai was Isaac back in the past. So it's only fitting, it's only fitting that Yahweh Shai would come back and take away the same power that he gave to Esau as Isaac. Okay? <laughs> and, and you know what that means? That's a complete circle. A complete circle. And we're heading to, the, we're heading to this, in this generation, man. We're heading to that complete circle in this generation. So this is a beautiful thing. Uh, reading on, it says, the 38th verse, and this is proof that no so-called black military group will take down Esau. Oh, no. Yahweh Shai was the one that gave him the power. Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to take him down dramatically. Okay? Reading on, it says, And Esau said unto his father, his father being Isaac, Has thou but one blessing? My father, bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, meaning the best parts of the earth Esau dwells in, Esau lives in. And, I, you know, you so-called Negroes, man, West Indians, Puerto Ricans, you know, all the way down to you so-called Mexicans, you Israelites, you got to understand that. You got to understand that this man is in his kingdom. A lot of you mar marching for equal rights. You, know, <laughs> you are totally lost. Okay, you do, not, you do not understand the prophecies of the Holy Scriptures. It was prophesied that this man shall come into his kingdom, Esau, and rule and be blessed with the sword, which is the, which the modern day sword now is the gun. Back then it was the actual sword. That's why Christopher... Columbus, who, whose real name was Cristobal Colon, that's why he was so successful with the sword. You know, in his memoirs, he said he couldn't put down the sword for an hour in conquering. The reason why he was successful goes back to this blessing right here. The blessing that Isaac gave Esau. The blessing of the sword. Even King David said this. <laughs> and you have to understand that. This so-called white man is in his kingdom, and he is the sword of the Lord. That, and we understand that here at Great Millstone. That's why we don't seek to, to have equal rights with the so-called white man in his kingdom. It's impossible, man. Two kings cannot sit on one throne. We are kings too. Okay, we are up-and-coming kings. But one king has to be booted off the throne and another king sit on. And that's, getting, that's what's getting ready to happen. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to boot the so-called white man off the throne, revoke his power, and set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. Okay? It is right here. The book of Psalm, the 17th chapter, uh, 13th verse. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. <laughs> Let me read that again. Arise, O Lord, which is, this is what the Lord is getting ready to do. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is getting ready, ready to rise up. Him and an innumerable amount of angels, a company of angels, if you will. And they're going to come in something called uh, uh, chariots of the Lord, which the so-called white man calls UFOs. They're going to come back and invade the earth. 
Yeah, it's going to be an invasion, but not little green men from Mars. It's going to be Yahweh Shai and the angels invading this place, invading this world, and bringing salvation to his elect as well as destruction to the so-called white man, the same one that he gave the power to, revoking his power. So arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Because disappointed means what? This devil, this so-called white man has an agenda. It's called the so-called New World Order. You don't believe me? Look at the back of the dollar bill. Do you know what that pyramid is all about? Do you know what those Latin words say? Anuit coeptis? Novus order seclorium? Do you know what that all seeing eye is all about? The majority of you don't. Okay? That is his, his enterprise. Okay? That is his dream. Okay? His aspiration, if you will. A so-called New World Order. Where he's the only one ruling. In this case, the top banking families. And everybody else is a slave. Everybody else is a slave with a chip inside of them. That is his dream, his aspiration. So we're saying to the Lord, arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Disappoint him from his aspiration, which is the so-called New World Order. Cast him down, which the Lord will do, and he will do it dramatically. You know, as it is written, uh, they shall build, but I will throw down. Okay, as it is written. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, this is King David saying this, which is thy sword. Which is thy sword. That's the same thing that Isaac blessed him with. The sword, which the Monday sword today is the gun. That's why the so-called white man is so into guns. Guns, guns, guns. Or like Magneto said it, guns. <laughs> you know, I was never into a gun, man. Never into it. I know a gun is destructive does a lot of power, but it just didn't do anything for me. I was never on no, no uh, uh, range training with no gun. I never desired to even pick up a gun, okay? But I am definitely into spiritual power. Now, spiritual power, uh, spiritual power, I like. The power of the mind, the power to be able to use the mind to destroy, you know? <laughs> as well as to heal, <laughs> you know? Spiritual power, okay? Spiritual power is greater than a gun, brothers. Okay, well, his blessing is the gun. He's a carnal man, so he got a carnal blessing. The sword, which the Monday sword is the gun. So again, King David said, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. The, now, who's the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4, Esau, Edom, which is thy sword. See? And there's another scripture where it is said, he, For he beareth not the sword in vain. I believe that's in James. Okay? Anyway, reading on, it says, From men which are thy hand, O Lord, the left hand of the Lord. That's why we don't fear, we don't fear the wrath of the so-called white man, because that is the left-hand side of the Lord. And the left-hand side of the Lord will be trumped by the right-hand side of the Lord. We are of the right, us Israelites. Let's take a look at the tribe of Benjamin. Banyamian in the Hebrew means son of the right. We are of the right. They are of the left. Guess who's going to win? The right will triumph over the left. Okay? So we don't fear the, the no matter what horror the so-called white man comes with, we don't fear him. Okay? Because we understand him. You don't uh, you don't fear what you totally understand. Okay? From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life. Let's read that again. From men of the world which have their portion in this life. That's Esau, Edom. This is his kingdom. This is his world. And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Yeah, it's called inheritance. Case in point, the Rothschilds, when Mayam Shalbawa came on the scene around the 1700s, he left his inheritance to who? His children. And the Rothschilds are ruling to this very day. Since they took over in the latter part of the 1600s going into the 1700s. When they came on the scene. Okay. They've been ruling to this very day. Then you have the Oppenheimer family. The Oppenheimer family goes back to the 1300s. There's family trees and I've seen it on the, on the, on the internet. With names of certain Jacob Oppenheimer and this Oppenheimer. Going back to the 1400s, the 1300s. The Oppenheimer family brothers are still in rulership today. There's the Oppenheimer banking house. Okay? So this is the scripture. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Who is that talking about? Is it talking about us? 
<laughs> when when Sammy Davis, when he was making all that money, did when he died, did he leave the rest of his substance to his to his 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 children? How about Red Fox when they were at their peak, making all kinds of money? You know why? Because they're Israelites. And as it is written, they're under the curses, or they were under the curses. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, meaning born. Cursed shall thou be when thou goest out, meaning you lose everything. Okay? You brothers have to, well, brothers understand it, but you people have to understand it. Okay? I'm talking to you Israelites out there. But only a handful of you will understand it. That's the elect. Anyway, moving on. Well, that's pretty much it. So, let's get back to uh, Genesis. We're dealing with the sword, right? The blessing of Esau. Genesis twenty seven thirty nine and Isaac his father answered and said unto him behold I dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth meaning they'll have everything they'll live in the best parts of the earth and of the dew of heaven above or from above meaning they're they're showered with blessings okay they got everything this is their kingdom and by thy sword shall thou live and by thy sword shall thou live that's their blessing the sword and shall serve thy brother and by thy sword shall thou live. What's an example of that? Well, recently we've been talking about who? Cristobal Colon, whose real name is Christopher Columbus. What was his blessing? The sword. He said it. He said he couldn't put down his sword for, for more than an hour in his conquest of our people. Okay? So he definitely lived by the sword. And it wasn't just him. It was all these so-called explorers which they were nothing but conquerors, Edomite conquerors, Vasco da Gama, and Cortez, Hernando Cortez, and Pizarro, all these guys. Cristobal Colon was no exception. Christopher Columbus, there you go. And by thy sword shall thou live. That's how they lived. And shall serve thy brother. And we're their brothers. We're Israelites. They're Edomites, we're Israelites. Edomites and Israelites were once brothers. Not anymore though. I'll show you why. Because they broke the brotherly covenant. Book of Amos 1 and 11. <laughs> it is right here. Uh, Thus saith the Lord. And the Lord said this. These are the words of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Through his son Yahweh Shai. Thus saith the Lord. For three transgressions of Edom. And for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. What is the punishment? Slavery. The Edomites are going into slavery underneath us. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Is that word sword again? And did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually. What's an example of that? The conquest of Cristobal Cologne. One example. Slavery. The slave trade. Another example. The example of Esau pursuing us, his brother, with the sword. And did cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually. He, he, he tore our nation in two. Okay, he destroyed our nation. How about 70 AD? Our brother did that. Esau destroyed our temples. Took our land. Set our land on fire. <laughs> I mean, I could go on and on and on of the atrocities of our brother Esau. <laughs> he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. To this very day, he still has that same wrath. So much so that he wants to totally destroy us and that's why Yahweh has to intervene. That's why Yahweh has to come back. So no more is he our brother. Okay? And, and, and Amos, the first chapter, the 11 verse, is, is proof of why he is no more our brother. So anyway, going back to his blessing, and by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother, which he indeed did serve us with the sword. We just read in Amos how he teared us perpetually, and I gave examples, historical examples. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion thou sh then, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Because at one time we had them in slavery during the so-called dark ages. But then when they came back into power as the Bourget family and then later the Rothschild family, they took over totally. Okay? So they broke that yoke 
we once had on them. But guess what? We're going to put that yoke right back on them, beginning with their top elites. And this is where Yahweh Shai comes in. The same one who gave them their blessing, the sword, is the same one who's coming back to destroy them, destroy their power, beginning with their top elite, put them in slavery underneath us. We're literally going to put chains on their top elite. <laughs> and in that day, brothers, Esau won't have a lick of power. Not one scintilla, look that word up, not one scintilla of power will Esau have in that day. Okay? And that is the one that's going to take him down. All these so-called black, these so-called black militant groups, which Esau set up anyway, you know, we know about the Black Panthers. Esau set that nonsense up. You had the American Indian Movement. Esau set that shit up. You had the Young Lords. Esau set that nonsense up. Okay? Yahweh is the only one that can take down Esau because he's the one that gave him his power to begin with. This is the nature of this lesson. Isaiah 66 and 15, it says this, For behold, the Lord will come with fire. This is the Lord coming to take. And I love this scripture. I always, <laughs> it's one of the scriptures I always, always refer to to show the magnitude of how our Lord is coming back. The great power that he's coming with. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. <laughs> That's out of those chariots. The so-called UFOs. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Also the nuclear missiles. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. The purpose of this is to take Esau out of rulership. And by the way, and I'll read the scripture and close with that. All these weapons that Esau was blessed with, guess what? The day is coming when all those weapons, the tanks and the guns and all of that, all of them will be destroyed, will be burnt, burnt to cinders. And I can read that in the book of Ezekiel. That's a future prophecy. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. This is what we're waiting for, patiently. And his rebuke with flames of fire. <laughs> for by... <laughs> and the joy fills my heart when I read this. this. This is why the Bible is known as the comforter. Because this comforts us. You know, puts a smile on our face. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many many okay but he's go he's going to deliver his elect now like i said what about all these weapons that esau was blessed with that he takes so much pride in you know that he sticks sticks out his his face proud because he's blessed with these great destructive weapons and these devils are proud man it was one of the Oppenheimers that said when when the knowledge of the atomic bomb came into being, he quoted uh, uh, something from the uh, uh, this East Indian literature, so-called East Indian, Elamite literature, the Bhagavad Gita, I think it's called. Uh, he quoted the line, I have, I have become the destroyer's or destroyer, I'm sorry, I have become the destroyer of worlds. And that's Esau, man, proud. You know, the harbinger of death. Anyway, what's going to happen to all his weapons? Let's read it. Bear with me for a minute. I want to go right to the point. Because one of their first jobs, the top elite, will be uh, burying bodies. Here's the proof on that. Ezekiel 39 and, 40, and 14. And they shall sever out men of continual employment. When you look that word up, employment means slave. That's what it literally means, slave. Employ employment means slave. Continual employment means continual slavery. And the day is us, the Israelites, beginning with the elect, will choose men of continual employment 
the men is all the other nations, starting with Esau, Edom, the elites, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth. Now, this is post-nuclear destruction as well as the destruction the Lord is, is coming to bring. I mean, these bodies, have, they have to be buried. That's unsanitary to have bodies just laying around. They have to be buried. They have to be put back in the earth. Well, we ain't going to do it. <laughs> Us Israelites ain't going to do it. We're going to have slaves to do that. And that's going to be one of the first jobs of the, of the top elite, to bury bodies. And I'm reading it right here. This is a future prophecy. Uh, passengers that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. Like I said, it'd be very unsanitary to have bodies, dead bodies laying around, all chopped up and hacked up. No, those bo bodies must be buried. They must be put back in the earth. To cleanse it, after the end of seven months shall they search. So there'll be a period of time where, where there'll be a lot of digging going on to clean the earth. Now I want to get to the scripture where it speaks about the weapons let me see, I think the I may have to pause the video to find it. I'm I think this is it right here. The book of Ezekiel thirty nine and nine. Now remember this is the same blessing that Esau got, which is the sword, which the modern day sword is his weapons, his guns, tanks, bombs, what have you. Anyway, behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord power. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel, is, now this is a future prophecy, shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. So all these weapons that Esau has been blessed with. Every last one of them brothers is going to be destroyed. So much so, so much so for his guns. And, and this, is, this is beyond beautiful. Okay. Because we ain't going to have no guns in our kingdom. We won't need them. Like I said there is a power that trumps the gun. That spiritual power. The power of the mind. Anyway, and they that dwell, and we're going to have swords. Because like I <laughs> priest Harry, I used to say, the sword is spiritual. You feel it. Swish. <laughs> That's what uh, high priest Harry I used to say back when he was, when he, which he still is, when he, when he was the lion of Israel. That's what Harry means. It means a lion. And boy, that man back then when he used to teach, Back on the island, 44th and Broadway, he was a lion, man. People on both sides of the street would stop and be mesmerized watching this man speak. And the Lord's going to raise him back up. Raise him back and put him back the same way even better. Because he is definitely one of the men of the Lord. And I believe by faith that he is one of the 12. Okay? But, you know, I digress. Let me uh, uh, read this again. Proving the point. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. The same blessing that Esau, <laughs> Esau once had. Both the shields and the bucklers. There you go. The bows and the arrows, which are his missiles, his tanks and all of that. And the hand staves and the spears. And they shall burn them with fire seven years. So there you go. So there's a day coming when all the weapons of Esau that he was blessed with by our forefather Isaac, which is Yahushai. There's a day coming when all these weapons will be destroyed, brothers. And that's going to happen in our kingdom. All right. So with that, hopefully you brothers were edified by this lesson. And I'll see you in the next uh, lesson. To recap, the only one that can take down Esau is the one that gave him his power to begin with. And that is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai gave him his power. Yahweh Shai is coming to take back that power that he gave him. Revoke it, if you will.